Why is my mouse so loud? Alright. I'm gonna jump into this. Grim Dawn version 1.0.10 with a dot in the middle. A wild update approaches. With this major patch, we are bringing you many quality of life changes, bringing some of the tech improvements we have been working on for the upcoming Grim Dawn expansion. It is a major step toward getting the expansion in your hands later this year, and it is finally here. Yay! With this update, we are also expanding on the awesome collection of illusions available within the Loyalist upgrade. Current and new owners of this collection will find two new helms available from Cory the Keeper and Devil's Crossing. The prestigious Helm of the Venerable Warrior, and the Bloody Pillager's Dreadhelm, and I have pictures of these. This is the Pillager's Dreadhelm, and this is the Helm of the Venerable Warrior. I'm not so much a fan of Viking-style art, but this is cool. I like this. Doesn't really fit Kim Don's atmosphere, but still looks neat, in my opinion. We hope you enjoy these latest changes to Grim Dawn and hope to see you in the expansion. P.S. for GOG users. What is it? Grand Old Games? Is that what GOG stands for? The patch is still in the final steps of the release process, but we expect it to go live within the next day or so. Okay. V1.0.1.0. Major new features. This update is primarily intended to bridge fixes and character data in preparation for Grim Dawn's first expansion. The patch includes an update to the save format as well as various quality of life improvements and adjustments to the early game. Regarding the save format, um, both character saves and stash files are updated and you will need to re-download GD stash if you're using that. Um, so the way it works is once you load into the game with the character, that character's file is updated. Um, before then, it, like, it doesn't automatically change everything to the new format. Once you load into a game with a character, that character is updated. All of your other characters are still in the previous format. Um, and once you access your stash, your stash is updated to the current version. So if you want to do anything with GD stash, now is the time to do it. Uh, I mean, GD Stash already has an update. I believe version 1.1.12 will handle this um, fine. Due to the changes in save format, characters played in V1.0.10 will not be compatible with earlier versions of the game. Kind of screws over GOG users, but whatever. Debuff status effect icons have been updated on the player HUD. They now display the debuff's effect, value, and the remaining duration. Debuff effects that previously only appeared on the player visually now also have debuff icons. Um, so, two things to note with this. One is that the buffs and debuffs no longer just go purely horizontal. They now kind of... I'm gonna... Go offline on Steam real quick. They now go, I believe it's seven, maybe it's six, some number of buffs and debuffs to the right and left, respectively, and then they go to another row of buffs and debuffs um, that stack six to the right or six to the left, um, and that keeps going. I don't know how high it goes, like, because it keeps stacking upward on your hotbar above your hotbar, or above your health and energy. Um, it keeps stacking upward. The most I've ever had was three rows of buffs and three rows of debuffs. I don't know if there's a limit. <clears throat> um, some things... Yeah, whatever, shut up, Windows. Some things still don't have descriptive debuff tooltip things. Um... What was it? The Harbinger's weakness debuff thing? Chthonian Harbinger's cast it on you? That doesn't tell you what it does, and I still have no idea what it does. Um, but most things like attack speed reduction, resistance reduction, uh, 
I don't know what else, offensive ability, defensive ability, reduction, all of that stuff has a debuff icon on it. Movement speed slow, cast speed slow, attack speed slow, etc. Um, all of that has icons. Owners of the Loyalist Edition now have access to two new ferocious helms. The Pillager's Dread Helm and the Helm of the Venerable Warrior both can be accessed through Glory the Keeper and Devil's Crossing. Future purchases of the Loyalist Edition now also include, in include these helms. I just woke up, by the way, so reading is an issue. And again, here are the helms. Totally didn't take those from Powerbam on, on the forums. Those are totally my original pictures. Crucible. Updated difficulty description tooltips for the Crucible. I don't know what that means. I didn't actually test the Crucible. <laughs> no idea what that implies. Fixed an issue with certain player summons ending prematurely if they were intended to explode on enemies. Is that only a Crucible fix? I don't know, because I never played Crucible. Mod tools added pet bonus and conversion support to skill passive on life buff self. Um, this was a huge one for me that I kind of nerded out for. Um, this I didn't know pet bonus didn't work, but I new conversion didn't work and I really wanted it to. Uh, skill passive on life buff self is kind of self-explanatory. Um, when you reach a certain threshold of life, you receive a buff. Um, this is arcane will, essentially, which triggers at 70% health if I'm not mistaken. The reason I use it in mods is because I can essentially make a passive buff. A buff that is always active, but isn't, like, actually a passive. Um, and the way you do this is by setting the health threshold to 101% or higher life. Um, because then even if you're at full health, you'll still be under the threshold to receive the buff, and so it can still be under its effects. So, I use this to... The reason I prefer this over a regular passive is that passives cannot have... Um, devotions and autocast skills assigned to them um, in such a way that they would work. I mean, you can force a autocast skill onto a passive, but it won't activate, it won't do anything. Um, so if you, but if you put an autocast skill or a devotion onto a buff, then it will work as intended. Um, and so this is passive on life buff self is kind of just a midway means of getting that to work. Um, and previously, you couldn't convert damage types between one another on this type of skill, and now you can, and it's fantastic. Added additional entries to item skill augment. Oh, I assume this is for the expansion, which is giving many, many plus skills on higher level items. I haven't actually looked into this. I don't know what the current number is. That's a good question. Many skill configuration options were added to skill modifier. Um, this would be a little difficult to explain. <laughs> Essentially, if you have a modifier for some skill, that modifier can do a whole bunch of crap now that it couldn't before. Skill modifier can now modify special animations. Um, this actually caused a bug that lasted right up until the final release testing play patch thing. Um, I don't actually know why this is being used. I assume it's something for the Inquisitor or Necromancer. <coughs> but I have no idea what this is for. Essentially, when you're building a skill, you assign it an animation, and now a modifier can change that animation. Um, added skill secondary support to skill attack buff. Just skill attack buff. What's attack buff? Oh. Um, I actually don't know what attack buff is. I know what attack buff debuff is, and yes, that is one phrase. If I'm not mistaken, attack buff debuff is something like Curse of Frailty, in which you cast a debuff. I don't know what attack buff is, though. Um, 
essentially still secondary support just means still secondaries are um, things like the I forget what the skill's name is the chain lightning on final strike the modifier that gives you chain lightning um, and so skill secondary is some kind of a semi quasi skill that activates when you use the main skill um, oh yeah attack buff might be a master's blade burst no, I don't, I don't think it is, because the base skill isn't... Oh, yeah, it might be. I have no idea. <coughs> Still secondary support to steel attack buff. Um, another skill secondary, I believe, is deadly momentum, which buffs you when you use it. Uh, when cadence activates on the third hit. Um, stuff like that that activates under certain conditions is what skill secondary is for. Um, new weighted pet spawning options for... S I'm not going to get too caught up in this because I don't really know entirely what this implies. New weighted pet spawning options for skill spawn pet and still targeted spawn pet. Um, this... These options were like already in the file for several patches. Um, Meaning, like, the entries were there, and you could put numbers in them. They just didn't work. I assume this is for the Necromancer's summon thing that, uh, at certain ranks, progressively has higher and higher chances to summon better skeletons. Um, essentially, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you want to have a skill that can summon multiple different things, and you want to give each thing a different chance to be summoned. Here you go. Added burst pet spawn support to still targeted spawn pet. Um, I actually needed this in one of my mods. I'm going to fix that now. Um, burst pet spawn lets you spawn multiple things at once rather than just one, um, and the targeted spawn pet chooses the location at which they are spawned. Um, where spawn pet just spawns the pets around the player um, in kind of a weird circle that bends to terrain. It's a little weird. Uh, more configuration options added to Chaos Beam. I don't know what Chaos Beam is. <laughs> I I don't know if it's Aether Ray or Aether Ray, what, how you pronounce it. Um, I really don't know what Chaos Beam is. Skill spell Chaos now travels like a projectile with a constant speed. Any existing skills using this template will need their velocities updated. Well, I have no idea what spell Chaos is. Added effects pack support to skill attack wave. Um, hmm. How is this being used? I don't know what the use case for this is. Um, maybe it's... Hmm. It might just be a quality of life update, but I'm trying to figure if there's anything this would allow you to do that you didn't do before. And I'm drawing a blank. I have no idea this would add. Added a second initial skill for monster controllers. Um, this one confuses me for a bit. Um, at first, I thought this was one of my suggestions in the private forums because I was asking for uh, better... not necessarily better monsters, but like better ways to control monsters via their AI and via their, um, uh, it's not actually via their controller, but via their skill configuration. I was asking for some kind of weird abstract stuff, and Xantai had said it wasn't a bad idea, what I was suggesting, but that it probably wasn't happening, um, for the next update and for the expansion, because it would just be too complicated. That's what I thought this was at first. 
I no longer think so. I think this is for a change that we will get to later on, um, that allows not monsters, but a pat well, I guess monsters do, but a particular pet <laughs> to, s to cast two things at once immediately. One of which is blood pact, and the pet might be Wendigo Totem. Added the option for projectile fireball like projectiles to explode on a miss. Pretty self explanatory. Um, chat is, Twitch chat is asking me, or not asking, but suggesting that potentially skill spell chaos is the, um, skill that the Chthonic cultists use against you, which, like, travels in a straight line, or just kind of, oh no, that arcs toward you, um, and I don't believe that's the case, I believe that's a regular projectile arcing and stuff, gravity and stuff, um, is usually handled by the projectiles themselves, and the skills just cast, cast, in air quotes, the projectile, um, projectiles are very configurable. Like, there's, as you see here, there's particular kinds of projectiles. Um, and so, when a skill uses a projectile, it just follows the parameters of that projectile. If the projectile says it flies in an arc, or if it comes from the heavens and falls to the ground, like mortar trap or something, that's not handled by the skill. That's all handled by the projectile itself. Um, which means this is something completely different, and I have no idea what it is. Um, so yeah, mod support seems good. A um, lot of stuff I don't know, which is good, because it gives me room to expand. Uh, where am I? Okay. Tech. Ooh, ooh, okay. Okay. Tech. Shrines. Ooh will now automatically use items from your transfer and personal stash in addition to your inventory. I have a response to this. Hold on a sec. And there was much rejoicing. Okay. Glad we got that out of the way. Um, very highly requested feature for... maybe multiple years, at least one year. Um, I don't think I really have to go into it. If you have components in your inventory and stuff in or uh, your stash, components in your stash and stuff in your stash, uh, devotion shrines will use those. I believe they still primarily use your inventory. Like if you have something in your inventory to fulfill the shrine uh, as well as in your stash, it will default to your inventory. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think that's what I observed in testing. Improved functionality of attack wave skills, particularly on slopes. And there was much rejoicing. Uh, force wave can go up and down stairs, pretty much, as can obsidian tremors um, from the obsidian juggernaut skill. Again, very highly requested. It makes those skills actually fun to use. Thank goodness. Um, if using Steam Cloud, character creation is now limited to 50 characters. This limitation is a safeguard as Steam Cloud has a maximum file count per game, and this could otherwise result in partial corruption of a stored character if the limit is exceeded. Okay. I don't use Steam Cloud, so I can tell you. Uh, Void Touch Damo, reading chat, Void Touch Damo has the skill Chaos Bolt, which shoots three projectiles. Yes, um, the, the Chaos Bolt is just a tag name, it's in a text file somewhere. Um, the three is dictated by the skill, the skill, um, explains how many projectiles it wants to fire, and I believe it also, um, dictates the skill. Also dictates uh, the arc, I guess, between the projectiles, um, so that they don't all just fire in one straight line, so that they kind of, like, move out away from each other. Um, the skill handles that. And then the projectiles themselves, I believe, have the arc 
through the air, and then a, per a particular velocity associated with them, um, as well as the fact that they don't immediately explode and they kind of like bounce along the ground. Um, I believe that's the way that skill is handled. Um, it's, I mean, I'm willing to, you know what, let's look at it real quick. This is the one thing. GD search. Skill. Spell. Chaos. TPL. Let's see what's using this. Nothing is using it, yay. Um, did I just get the template wrong? Database factor uh, templates. Still. Yeah, I got the template one. Okay. Um, Attack spell drain. What is that? Oh, attack spell chaos. Okay. Attack. <clears throat> I assume attack spell drain is a uh, aether tendril. What? Okay, so it's the little zaps that like aether crystals shoot at you. <clears throat> Why is that spell chaos? It's the thing that fondly zaps you with. <laughs> what the hell? Nice naming. Seems good. Okay, so what was that actually for? Now it travels like a projectile with a constant speed. I wonder if that means you can just, like, make one of those instantly reach a player, and so it will guaranteed not miss because it has automatic targeting and, like, follows players around. That would be funny. Um, alright. Where was I? Fixed not being able to scroll on long skill tooltips. Um, yes, for those that didn't know, because I know there's a lot of people that don't know about this, if you have a very, very long, um tooltip, you can use the mouse scroll wheel to scroll up and down. Um, I actually didn't know this would work on skill tooltip. Oh wait, no, yes I did. Did I? Again, early morning. Well, it's not actually, I'm just lazy. Um, early morning for me, and I'm still a little out there. So, when once you should have been but could not, now you can. Yay. Fixed lightning skills sometimes failing in the first target in the chain. Okay. Fixed lightning skills sometimes failing if the first target in the chain was an invalid target. I don't know what an invalid target is. But the chain should continue, I guess. <laughs> Fixed being able to spawn pets on non pathable terrain. <clears throat> this is an interesting change. It has potentially significant ramifications in modding. Um, one trick that modders used for achieving teleportation, like targeted teleportation, was spawning a pet and then having that pet immediately uh, cast spell teleport swap, I believe it's its name, which is what Valderon uses to swap positions with you. So you spawn a pet and then that pet immediately swaps positions with you, and then the pet despawns, and it's invisible to begin with, so you never actually notice it. Um, but that's what's going on behind the scenes. 
that's one thing that modders were using to allow players to teleport around. Um, and the issue with that was you could spawn a pet where you shouldn't be able to move yourself. Now that no longer seems to be the case. If you can no longer put pets where they won't move, then you won't wind up there with this method, which is kind of cool. Uh, fixed instances where skills were not benefiting from abilities that lower cooldowns. I feel like I, at one time I knew of a situation in which this happened, but I'm drawing a blank. I have no idea what the vpro for this was. <laughs> Lowered immunity timer for contagion type debuff skills. Um... What does this mean? Uh, it's a bloody pot's buff, I assume. <laughs> Behind the scenes tech change. I do not know what the immunity timer is used for. Maybe it's has something to do with the spread rate? Or maybe it allows a contagion to spread to something it already spread to after a certain period of time has passed, I have no idea. Fixed certain defenses being reducible by total resist reduction, that should not have been. This one I know. This one, if you had more than some number of chance to block with a shield, and maybe shield recovery, I don't know if it affected shield recovery, um... If you had more than 40% or 50% block chance, maybe shield recovery. Total resistance reduction would reduce your block chance and your shield recovery because reasons. It no longer will. Disabled stand for universal plug and play devices at startup if universal plug and play is disabled. I assume this is mostly a uh, optimization, I guess. Fixed components getting stuck in the inventor UI when salvaging and pressing the combined components button. <laughs> I did not know that was a thing. That's pretty funny. Fixed charge type steals from preventing weapon swapping when used on a target that dies before reaching it. Oh. <laughs> I saw this reported a while ago. Um, I thought that was already fixed. I guess not. Good. I remember seeing this reported in... Maybe two, three patches ago. Good that that's fixed. Fixed an animation cancel exploit when using the controller. That one dude on Reddit, you did it. Good job. Fixed a DPS comparison error when using duplicate item skills. I have no idea. Fixed veteran setting not being remembered in the main menu. Self-explanatory enough, I don't know if I ever encountered this. I feel like veteran was always remembered for me. I don't know. Fixed skills. Whoa. Fixed skills bound to mouse wheel being able to be cast multiple times before the cooldown triggered. Shucks. <laughs> you can no longer cast pneumatic burst 600 times and instantly get full health. <laughs> Damn. On the. Um, that's sarcasm. I mean, you could do that. But. Good that that's fixed. On the KO to sheet, resistances are properly uh, capped at 100%. I don't know if I like this. For one thing, it was funny seeing resistances at like 110%. Um, for another thing, I guess it could be confusing uh, because you start to wonder if taking those damage types would then heal you, which it wouldn't. It still functions as 100% if it's over 100%. Um, but this is kind of like... I mean, I guess it doesn't matter now that we have the ability to hover over a resistance and get how far over that resistance we've stacked our resistances. Um, so I guess it doesn't really matter, but it does seem to be hiding information. It... Hmm. <laughs> it's hiding the overcapping over information. Um, 
So if you were able to overcap your resists to a point where you should be able to have, say, 105% resistance, um, that is hidden from you. And I guess it doesn't especially matter in terms of gameplay, because all the effects are the same, but... I don't know, it... It's obscure, and... 99.99% of players will never encounter this. Um, but it is a little... Eh, I'm not sure if I'm in favor of it. Fixed active... I feel like... If you optimize your character to the point that you are able to get over 100% resistances... At that point, you probably have a good fundamental understanding of the mechanics and know that resistances over 100% don't heal you, which you can inf infer from enemies that have more than 100% resistance to something, because you don't heal them when you use a damage type against them. Fixed active buff skills not properly deactivating when unlearning them. Oh. So just if you put points in field command, activate it, and then unspec from field command, previously the field command buff would have stayed up. No longer the case. Cool. Game. General adjustment to the early game balance, levels 1 to 40, on normal veteran difficulty to smooth out leveling. Um, I haven't really noticed a change in normal. In veteran, certain things seem easier, certain things actually seem a little bit harder. Um, heroes in veteran really suck. <laughs> uh, maybe it's the skills I was using, because I was testing some skills that, for the most part, I don't use too much. Um, so, maybe it was those skills? But veteran has some weird swings to it. It's definitely maybe a little smoother in general, but there are dips in which you suddenly take a lot of damage and suddenly are not dealing a lot of damage, and that's mostly surrounding heroes, which in some ways I'm okay with. Um, it's I think it's fine for heroes to influence your gameplay to that extent, um, and I kind of wish they would in you know Elite and Ultimate which they don't, they're basically just regular enemies. Um, but uh, for leveling, I would still stay in normal. I don't think veteran is worth it. A veteran is still mostly just for the experience. Maybe a little bit for learning the game, learning like strategies and mechanics and stuff that you could learn in normal but at a much slower rate um, because veteran is more in your face about everything. Um, so yeah, there's that. Increased the drop rate of select monster and frequency from bosses. I have no idea which ones. Um, I guess I can run my Python program. Actually, I'll do that now. In the background. Do I want to, though? This eats up a lot of CPU. I'm recording this. Whatever. Ah. Uh. MT quality. I do not remember the commands for my own program. <coughs> okay. Okay, we'll just do that in the background. <coughs> Itemization. Itemization. Increased the base attack speed of one-handed guns, a net DPS gain. This increase is more significant in the 1 to 50 range. I haven't really noticed. Um, I guess because their damage is so low, being low level, um, that the DPS change isn't significant enough to really notice anything. Increased base damage of two-handed melee and ranged weapons at levels 26 plus by 3 to 15 percent. This increase is more significant at higher levels. So in theory, your 
super high level uh, two handed weapons should get around 15% more damage. Which is great. Two handed still sucks. Epic. Mal. Maleficus? Malef. I don't know. The placed armor reduction with 60% health. Get used to this. Armor reduction is saying bye bye. Epic. Empowered Maleficus. Uh, replaced armor reduction with 170% health. Mavada's ammo belt. Increased percent weapon damage on granted weapon pool skill. Skill. <laughs> Do they not know that the S in WPS means skill? That's really funny. To 110%. Empowered Mavada's ammo belt. Increased percent weapon damage on granted weapon pool skill skill to 120%. Touch of Malice. Replaced armor reduction with 15 offensive ability. See, dude, Crate, even Crate doesn't know their acronyms. It's, it's fine if you don't know your acronyms, alright? Empowered Touch of Malice. Replaced armor reduction with 33 offensive ability. I really like this mace, honestly. I wish it were better, and this is better. Um, I don't think... <laughs> I'm very opinionated about the things I want to like, of course. Um, I don't think this suddenly makes it a good weapon. <laughs> it, it's a cool weapon, mechanically. Um, I do like it, but I, I don't think this is enough for me to use it. Legendary Bailsmith's Crossfire. Increased percent weapon damage on granted weapon pool skill skill to 115% and did the same thing to Bailsmith's Salvo. Legendary... Uh, here we go, here's a big one. Baronath Reforged. Conversion to Elemental Removed. Oh, I actually didn't know that. Okay, well, that changes a whole bunch of stuff that I was going to talk about. Um, conversion to elemental... Elemental. Imagine that there's a T right here. Conversion to elemental removed. Skill proc redesigned. Now a granted toggled buff with a high energy upkeep. I believe it's 5 per second, 5 energy per second. That grants 5% crit damage and 100% of elemental dealt as physical. So if you want to do physical damage, Panetti's replicating missile, go ahead. Um, I have mixed feelings about this. Not about this, but about this. Uh, this is something that absolutely should be in the game, and it's amazing. Putting this on a weapon I'm not so fond of. Did they fix to physical conversion? Yeah, they did. Um, in the testing patches, uh, this either wasn't happening, or it was happening at the wrong time, or I have no idea. They later fixed that, and it does work. Uh, it works as it describes. Uh, my issue with this <laughs> is when you put something this amazing on a weapon, then this sole weapon dictates how you are allowed to use this amazing utility. Um, consider warp fire, and warp fire had a lot of problems with it that made it very powerful. But warp fire, um, with its previous conversion of eighty-five percent core to fire, was very desirable because that opened up a lot of doors, and so a lot of builds were using it. Currently. Because a lot of builds were using it, it was nerfed, and now it gives 45% cord to fire. Um, so now we have another weapon that converts 100% elemental to physical. Um, and so a lot of builds will be using this, because this is very neat, and it is something that should exist in the game. And high cord to fire conversion should exist in the game. Um, I don't know if weapons are the place for these unique sorts of deals, though. Um... When you have a weapon, it dictates what kind of build you are allowed to use for whatever it offers. Like, if you put this on a two-handed weapon, that severely dictates things, because then right out of the bat, you can't use uh, Devastation, you can't use, um, what is it, Albrecht's Aether Ray, um, 
two-handed severely restricts you in general, which is one of the main problems with two-handed weapons, in my opinion. Uh, two-handed legendary weapons, that you don't see them a lot, because there's a lot of skills that they just don't work with. Um, a lot of good skills that people like, that you can't use with two-handed weapons. And even smaller, minute details, going back to Baroneth itself, smaller, minute details that dictate how you play, um, like a sword versus a mace. A mace has lower speeds, higher um, potential damage, lower minimum damage, um, which can change how you want to optimize your build. Whereas a sword is very consistent in its gameplay, it's very consistent in the damage it deals, um, its damage range is very narrow. So even minute things like that, and swords generally are faster, whereas maces are notably slower, and so attack speed stacking is a little more efficient with swords than it is with maces. So when you put these weird things on items that are very, very influential for your build, um, I think you inadvertently severely narrow how these things are meant to be used. And maybe that's Trait's intent. Maybe they don't want um, this type of buff to be used everywhere, like it could be. Um, maybe that's their intent. But it would be neat if you could use this anywhere. Which is why I would like to see this on a medal, or an amulet, or a ring, or something, that just builds can just generally use. Um, Alright, enough complaining. What can you actually do with this? Uh, I did a... What was I doing? I was doing a Fire, fire Strike Saboteur, which converted the fire and lightning damage on Fire Strike and Static Strike, and the cold damage in Nightblade, all to physical. I just pooped out physical everywhere. Um, you can do physical Panetti's Replicating Missile, you can do physical Calidor's Tempest, kind of. Um, you can... what was the other one? Oh, right, I didn't think of this at first, but I really want to try it. You can do physical Electra's Flash Freeze, which would be really good, because the modifier for Electra's Flash Freeze reduces physical resist by 50%, um, which means you can stack it, and it's the minus 50%, so it stacks with other things. So, you can stack it with... excuse me... Um, break morale, and the Assassin's Mark thing, and you can get somewhere around minus 100% physical resist. Which is really good, except on bosses, because that still doesn't work on bosses. Um, yeah. There's lots of other things you can do with this. Um, devotions, of course, will be affected by this. Um, I bet, what is it? Not Whirlpool, I mean, I guess kind of Whirlpool, but, um, Tsunami would be really solid if all of its lightning and all of its cold damage was physical. Could be good. How does it interact with Overload? Overload is the Panetti's Replicating Missile modifier. Modifiers for a skill come first, before conversion. Yes. <laughs> Modifiers apply their percent bonuses and everything before conversion takes effect. <clears throat> Alright, enough about that. Well, mm, not quite. Another thing I liked about the previous steel part was it gave, um... Oh, Overload is the modifier for Stranger's Elemental Exchange. It would convert the dots, the chance to do burn, fast burn, uh, electrocute, into internal trauma. And so you will always just do internal trauma. <laughs> Which is actually pretty cool, now that I think about it. That could be really good for um, physical cadence. Could be nifty. Uh, I kind of like the old steel part, though. Um, because there was still a universality to it that benefited, like, melee users, people that were actually using the sword. Um and casters that were using the sword for stats and the proc and were otherwise just casting stuff. For instance, I came up with a, uh, was it Vitality? I think it was a Vitality Conjurer 
in a previous patch that was using Baronath Reforged. I have no reason to do that now. <laughs> um, in fact, it was using two Baronath Reforged. And I was doing that because the skill gave you 30%... Yeah, 30% crit damage. So with two of them, you had 60% crit damage on a skill that did notoriously low damage but a lot of healing. And so it would do much, much more damage and much, much more healing. And that idea is just thrown out the window. You can't really do that anymore. Um, also, it gave total speed, which was nice. It doesn't anymore. The base weapon still does. Baronath Reforged itself, I believe, has 8% total speed on it. But the proc previously gave... I think 10% total speed? No, no more. Oh, do they stat... Do the dots on Estandra's Elemental Exchange modifier stack if they're internal trauma. My guess is no. But I don't know that for a fact. It's a good question. Legendary Bone Shadow Treads. Reduced cooldown on Steel Proc. Okay. Replaced armor reduction with a 50 defensive ability reduction. Straight buff. Legendary Chelsea of Barbaros added 12% chaos resist. Okay. Legendary Dawn Victor's Duty increased flat lightning damage. Replaced percent fire and lightning resist with 24% elemental resist. Added 6% cooldown reduction. Massive buff to this thing might actually be used now, maybe. Legendary Deathbound Amethyst. Steel Puck now activates on attack rather than on kill. Bonuses adjusted accordingly. Added percent damage bonuses. Um, this is kind of a weird weapon. Or, weapon. It's kind of a weird amulet. Uh, it's a vitality... Uh, what is it? It's not BOM. I have that on my mind. Uh, phonetic throw. <laughs> it's a vitality phonetic throw weapon. Um, which means the proc will activate a lot on attack. But there's just generally better choices than phonetic throw in the current meta. Unless you really, really want to use that skill for some reason. Unless you're Nintrix and he has 7,000 hours on that skill alone. Um... <clears throat> but there's just generally better choices than that skill, and if you're using that skill, there's just generally better choices than this amulet, and the proc was kind of the issue. On on attack is definitely better than on kill. Um, it's a buff. It's not satisfactory. TLDR. Legendary Death Whisper... Whoa. Death Whisper Legends added 12% chaos resist. Sure. Legendary Demon Slayer's Garb Set. Replace plus 3 to Blade Trap with plus 3 to Phantasmal Blades. Replaced percent Pierce Damage with percent Vitality Damage. Updated bonuses on Steel Proc. Cool. <laughs> uh, this, was, this set receives a lot of hate because it previously seemed as though it did not know what it wanted to do. So it's nice that it's being looked at and kind of reworked a little bit. Um, that's that's good. I haven't especially looked over these. Like, in-game, I haven't tested these. Um, I assume they work, but I haven't played around with this on a build. Um, so in general, replaced pierce, percent pierce damage with percent bleed damage. Replaced plus two to blade trap with plus two to heart seeker on the hat. The chest's skill proc now activates at 40% health. Oh wait, no. The defense? Oh, the amulet's skill proc. I believe it's the amulet. Now activates at 40% health. The chest has plus two devouring blades changed to plus two to nether edge. Um, and the life ender, which is the pistol, added 15% physical conversion to vitality. Updated damage types on Slayer's Blades is Steel Proc. Um, 
so seems better. Seems they took the blade trap bonuses and changed them into pneumatic blades. Pneumatic blades. There's a good one. Phantasmal blades bonuses. Um, which is nice. I believe that was heavily requested. <coughs> um... Should be better. I don't know if this will be the go-to for uh, Phantasmal Blades. Could be. I don't know. Invoker's Burning Hand. Added 15% of Aether, Doubt as Fire. Invoker's Charging Touch. Added 15% of Aether, Doubt as Lightning. Pretty interesting. Little buffs to Panetti's Replicating Missile so that Aether Panetti's, Panetti's replicating missile is even worse. Yay. Um, no, it obviously augments the fire and lightning damage, not the cold damage, because the fuck cold damage, um, of Panetti's, which is neat. Very minimal change in general, I would say. I think I think where this would be good is if you used two of the same one of these and got 30% Aether to X conversion, um, and then used Spark of Ultos or Warp Fire, probably Warp Fire because of the plus skills bonuses, uh, used Warp Fire to then convert the Cold into Fire, um, probably 30% Aether to Fire, and then 45% Cold to Fire, and make a fire-heavy Panetti's Replicating Missile would be the way to do this. But then you lose out on the 4P uh, set bonus, which sucks, because it's actually a pretty good bonus. I don't know, kind of sideways. The Invoker's set is... I use it on my Twitch Jacks character, so I'm a little bit biased, but... Um, I feel like the Invoker set is much better at doing things that are not related to Panetti's Replicating Missile, which is what it's meant to do. Uh, Mark of the Apostate, renamed to Mark of the Forbidden. Major buff. This is the buff that this item has needed. It's pretty huge. Markovian's Bulwark. Increased offensive ability to 38 and increased bonus physical damage. Markovian's buffs. Yay! Do this again. And there was much rejoicing. Still using Warborn. Meat Shield. <coughs> Increase percent health bonus to 21%. Replace plus 3 to Marge's Pact with plus 3 to Heart Wild. <laughs> Heart Wild. Heart of the Wild. Um, more health. Yay. Memes. And there was much rejoicing. Ah. Uh, so now that strat where if you're low health and hardcore you, and you weapon swap to meat shield, that's even better. Yay. Um, sure, <laughs> I guess. Legendary Mind Warp. Increase percent attack speed and cast speed to 18%. Holy shit, that's a lot of attack speed. Remove the, the cooldown reduction, that kind of blows. Still proc now activates off of all attacks. Lasts 3 seconds and has no cooldown. Bonus is updated. It converts, the proc converts 22% of physical into aether. Um, whereas the base weapon converts 15% of physical into aether, which gives you 39% plus or minus deviation on stats on the base weapon. Um, phys physical to aether conversion, so when you add a component, I forget its name, I think it's Wrathstone, that converts physical to aether, you're sitting at 49%. And then if you have, um, whatchamacallit, hmm, what is it called? The exclusive skill that converts physical to aether. Uh, you have even more. Uh, TLDR, you can still get to, um, 100% conversion. I'm a little distracted by a bug in my room. You can still get to 100% physical to aether conversion with itemization that you will probably choose to go with anyways, and with um, s skill choices that you will 
probably choose to go with anyways. Massive, massive buffs to this weapon. And this weapon was already pretty okay. The proc was 100% physical to Aether. It activated um, on crit. It was 100% on crit, which kind of sucked, because if you were using two of these, you were guaranteed to pop both of their cooldowns at once. <coughs> Whereas now... It's on attack, meaning you won't necessarily activate both of them at the same time. But if you have enough attack speed, and because it has no cooldown in the last 3 seconds, if you're attacking constantly, you will probably have both of these up all the time. Which is amazing. This weapon is so good. It's mind-blowing how good this weapon is. I don't know if it's necessarily the best individual thing in the game, <laughs> but it's, it's pretty damn good. Legendary, Necromancer's Death Grips, renamed to Bone Scavenger's Death Grips, that's the dumbest name. Legendary, Nidala's Lead Wraps, replaced bonus damage to humans with 22% Aether Resist. Why can't we just get both of those stats? Porte no los dos. Legendary Pestilence woo, Pestilence of Dreed replaced minus percent armor on Plate of Rust with minus percent physical resist. I love Pestilence of Dreed. I think it's a fantastic idea that I really, really hope um, is revisited in the expansion. Uh, if you've never crafted a Pestilence of Dreed, then you're missing out. Because when you craft one, you get one of, I think, eight? Maybe it's seven. One of seven grant or eight granted skills as the item's completion bonus, um, and all the skills do different things. For the for the particular plague of rust, it's like the seven or eight plagues of dread or something. Um, the plague of rust previously reduced armor, now it reduces physical resist. If you are just joining the stream or you skipped ahead in the video that I'll upload to YouTube. Uh, Armor reduction in general is getting shafted and being replaced with other stuff. Um, so this is more of a consistency with that sort of thing. Um, legendary Pyroclasm mark. Increased percent weapon damage on granted. Weapon pool skill skill. Ah, yes. I love it. To 115%. <laughs> legendary Siege Breaker reduced health to 50. Oh, I'm dumb, aren't I? There is no Warborn shield. <laughs> There's Siege Breaker. Okay. Minor nerf to Warborn. A little bit less health. Um. Markovian's Bulwark still sucks. Legendary Sigils of the Executioner. Reduced bonuses to Phantasmal Armor and Elemental Awakening to plus three. It was previously plus four. <coughs> Legendary Altamos' Rings. Reduced flat core damage. Shadow Strike nerfs. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Legendary. Sidnet of the Fallen. Replace plus two to Nether Edge with plus two to Phantasmal Blades. Nether Edge with plus two to Phantasmal Okay. Sure. That, that's a sideways buff. It's a very long, complex, complicated reason for that to be a buff. Um, it, it's a buff. Legendary Skyreach Bulwark. Replace percent fire and lightning resist with 35% elemental resist. Added 6% physical resist. Holy shit, that's so many resist. Wait, wasn't this already touched on? Oh no, that was Don Victor's duty. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, getting my... Shaman shields that are lightning based confused. Um, cool, resists. Legendary speaker for the dead added 45% of vitality, doubt as cold. <laughs> That's so dumb. No. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Just delete synergy with other items, yay. Um, so, for those who haven't been watching and memorizing my patch notes analysis, first of all, shame on you. Second of all, um, previously, 
the Demon Slayer's hat converted, I think, 35% cold into vitality. Now, and it had good synergy with the Speaker for the Dead. Now, Speaker for the Dead converts 45% vitality at, into cold damage. Because, fuck your synergy. Yay. Uh, legendary Tempo Tempest. Still puck, now also reduces defensive ability by 50 on nearby enemies. Still trash. Because it's two-handed. Legendary, the final stop. Increased percent armor to 14%. Jeez. Increased internal trauma damage dealt by granted skill. Okay. Legendary. The Untouchable. Added 6% cooldown reduction. Hmm. Into dusting. I always considered this to be kind of a joke shield. <laughs> um, so it's, it's interesting to me that it's being adjusted. Because um, it's complete overkill. In every way, it gives you ungodly amounts of defensive ability. So why the cooldown reduction? Like, what is what's that for? What skills does it want you to cast more? <laughs> hmm. War cry? <laughs> Mirror? I, I don't know. Legendary. Chosen's Ascension set. Replace percent resist reduction on fallen comet with 80 defensibility reduction. That's actually pretty okay. I usually don't care for defensibility reduction on like item skills because it's usually really, really, really low and doesn't make a difference. It doesn't stack with itself. So you can't, like, add it up. Um, so if, if you have Flashbang, you're just going to use Flashbang anyways. Um, 80 is okay. 80 is pretty good. This other stuff, where, uh, yeah, 50, that's below the line of tolerance for me. Like, I would say 65 plus is where it starts to be tolerable, and then anything above 110 I would consider good for this stat. Um, Ozwin's head guard replaced minus percent armor on Ozwin's flame skill part with minus six percent physical resist. Doesn't matter because the whole set is fire lightning focused, mostly fire. Will of the living significantly increased flat and percent aether damage added eight percent gas speed. Oh, this is the shield. Uh. uh I mean, the, the flat damage is meaningless. Who cares? Um, because it's a shield, it will never be used. If the percent aether damage was significantly increased, that could be good. Cast speed should maybe be welcome. I don't know why you want cast speed on a shield build. Legendary! Zohan's Revenge. Another shield. Reduced cooldown on skill proc to 1.8 seconds, that's not bad. Increased chance of pair stun retaliation to 15%, I believe it was previously 10%. Okay. Good buffs. <coughs> Relic, Annihilation. Reduced energy cost and target radius... Huh? Reduced energy cost and target radius, and increased the burn damage of the granted skill. The actual explosion radius remains the same. Oh, okay. So... This is a little misleading. First glance, it's a nerf. No, it's actually a buff. It's more accurate when you cast it. Because uh, you target um, a particular point, and it falls somewhere around that point. This is a meteor skill. It launches a big rock onto an enemy. Um, and now that its variable targeting radius is smaller, meaning it's more closer to where you target. Um, and the explosion radius is the same. So... In all ways, this is a buff. Probably still sucks. Um, well, look, Conflagration removed armor reduction from granted skill and didn't give it anything else. Awesome. Straight nerf. <laughs> not, not much of one, mind you, but straight up nerf. Seems good. Unless, okay, maybe it's a buff if you want to cast Conflagration against 
uh, reflect of enemies. You no longer use armor or uh, lose armor. Yay. Uh, death chill. Reduced flat cold and vitality damage and chance of frost wind damage on granted skill. Uh, Shadow Strike nerf? Question mark. But was Shadow Strike using this? I don't know. <laughs> um, I, uh, eh, I don't know. Relic, Gunslinger's Talisman, increased activation of granted weapon pool skill, skill, to 10%, 12%, 15%, and on the Plunderer's Talisman, increased percent all damage to 50%. Okay. Valid. Vacuuming. Added 8 to 12 physical damage. That's not bad. <laughs> Th this relic is on the cusp of being good. This could be what puts it over and makes it good. Chad is telling me that Shadow Strike builds do not use Death Chill, and instead they use Bogothian's Carnage slash Nemesis. So I don't know what this is for. Um, this could be good. Scourge. Replace chance of retaliation with flat, cold, and vitality. <laughs> flat, cold, and vitality damage. Increased damage. Increased chance to freeze to 100%. And reduced cooldown to 2.4 seconds on the granted skill. For some reason, this granted skill is not a mobility skill. And it doesn't move you. Because... Reasons, even though it absolutely should be, it isn't. Um, yeah, it's just, you walk up, it's like slam, essentially, from the uh, chipped claw components. I can flame SS without understanding SS builds, because I know SS builds are number one, and I hate anything that's number one. Get out of here. Um, no, this should absolutely be a mobility skill. Should absolutely thrust you toward your target. It doesn't. It, you just walk up to your target and bash them on the head and then wait 2.4 seconds before you can do so again. It would just be a Shadow Strike ripoff. And it should be, because it already is. <laughs> it's a Shadow Strike that doesn't move you. Vaya Prefix Inquisitor, renamed to Runecaster. Vaya Suffix Defiler, renamed to Venom Claw. The suffix ferocity renamed it. Oh wait, no. Replace chance of armor reduction with percent run speed. Aha. Uh -huh. That's pretty sizable buff, actually. That's pretty good. Faction adjusted values on two-handed on two-handed weapon specific augments to be double or higher of the one-handed versions, because this needed two years to happen. Faction, I'm a little salty. Potent exile, exiles might. Replace chance of armor reduction with aether resist. So this affects both the base exiles might and the potent exiles might, which is cool. I'm not. Huh? Is does scourge replace normal attacks? I'm not convinced about that. Let me close out of this. This is one I have to check. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no. It replaces weapon attacks, I believe, or weapon pool skills. So I don't believe that's the case. I don't believe weapon pool skills activate off of Scourge. Component, Olwyn's Blood. 
Vesipi updated. Rather than requiring a severed claw, now requires one chipped claw and one polished emerald. And there was much rejoicing. And there was much rejoicing. Seems good. I'll take it, thank you. Come again. Four reference, the full recipe is still three Chthonic seals, one roiling blood, one severed claw, one polished, uh, one chipped claw, one polished emerald. So, you know, kind of a lot, and some iron. Kind of a lot, but no longer do you need to farm 7,000 chipped claws to make a relic. Thank you. Come again. Component, vicious spikes replaced armor reduction with 4% crit damage. That's huge. <laughs> that is massive. I'm gonna start using vicious spikes on builds that have no business using vicious spikes. That is actually stupid. I love it. I absolutely love it. Alright. Class and skills. Celestial procs now have a shared cooldown on skills that summon multiple pets. Sample thermite mines, wind devils. The affected skills have received a buff to compensate for this change. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, everyone saw this coming, I think. Your wind devils can no longer crash games by having 5,000 devotion effects off at once. Um, deserved. Okay. <laughs> Fucking deserved. Pardon my... French. Sifu play. Completely deserved. Devotion. Abomination. Added 12 acid damage. Okay. Affliction. Added 16 vitality decay over 3 seconds. Which is like the only place you can get vitality decay. Assassin. Increased pierce damage to 8. Harpy. Increased pierce damage to 5 to 10. This is a lot of pierce damage, actually. Leviathan. Reduced fast burn damage to 15 over 3 seconds. Again, Shadow Strike nerf, question mark. <laughs> Unknown Soldier. Increased pierce damage to 12. This is so much pierce damage. Vulture added 10, offen oh, 10 offensive ability. They really want pierce to be a thing, don't they? Holy crap. Wendigo. So this is a pierce constellation, I think. Is it? Or is this the, uh, red constellation that gives you, like, 5% cunning on the left? This, mm, hmm. Is it, it's either Harpy or Vulture. Graham Tools. Yeah, this is Vulture. Okay, so it now has offensive ability somewhere on it. I was thinking it was Harpy. Okay. Wendigo added 8 vitality decay for 3 seconds. Yay! So in total, here and here, you can get 24 vitality decay for 3 seconds. That's 8 vitality decay damage per second. Dude, here we are. This is the meta. Here we go. Blind Fury. Place armor reduction with 8 physical resist reduction because they completely forgot that break morale is a skill that people actually use. Or war cry is a skill with a modifier named break morale that people actually use. And this won't stack with that. Um, so kind of a sideways nerf in that regard. Blizzard! Increased number of projectiles to 10. Reduced cooldown to 3.2 seconds. I just want this to have a smaller area of effect. Like better targeting so projectiles actually hit more than or well, more than one projectile actually hits the same target, unless it's the Lagorian. Um, then I'll use it. Then I'll use Blizzard. Until that happens, not so much. Elemental Seeker. Increase the radius of the Seeker's aura and eruption to 3.8 meters. Increase its movement speed and increase the damage of the eruption. Okay. I'm sure Dicky Ditch is happy. He has an Elemental Seeker build. Which I believe he has as a joke. Because it kind of... Blows. Um, Lighter Empyrean, increase percent damage reduction to 20% and increase burn damage scaling with rank. Okay, sure. I'll allow it. I don't know if this makes it good, but 
makes it better, so sure, I'll take it. Meteor shower can once again be assigned to thermite mines. Yay, you just can't block it 5,000 times. Tsunami, reduced cooldown to 1.2 seconds. Dude, I'm telling you, Baron Earth, we forged Tsunami. Physical damage tsunamis just flying out everywhere. Seems like it could work. Soldier. Counter Strike added a negligible amount of weapon damage that you will never notice. Don't get me wrong, this is nice because it means it can fart things like uh, resist reduction, flat resist reduction on gear, and lifesteal and stuff, so it's kind of nice. Increased activation chance by 5%, and increased physical retaliation with Vank. Energy cost now stales with Vank, but starts lower. It's still terrible. <coughs> this is negligible. This is not enough. Still has a 1 second cooldown for some reason. Vitaliation is... Eh. And this is... Kind of a nerf, eventually. So, I don't know. It starts. Deal with it. Force wave. Increased percent weapon damage to 2000% by rank 16, 240% by max ultimate rank. Increased physical damage scaling with rank. I don't remember the change, uh, what it was at rank 16. Um, but at 26 out of 16, it was to 25% weapon damage. So that's plus 15% weapon damage. Which is nice. It's... It's more than we got here. Yay. Um, so yeah, Force Wave. Pretty good. Especially since it goes upstairs now. Vending Force replaced Armor Reduction with Pierce Damage. This is actually very good for leveling with. Um, if you cap out Force Wave early on, and you want more damage to just really hammer bosses into the ground, Vending Force is the way to go. It's pretty good. Internal Trauma, increased damage, staling with Vank. Now also adds percent attack speed reduction, staling with Vank. Um, just playing around with it. The percent attack speed reduction stales really poorly. Um, so unless you're going for internal trauma damage on a build, internal trauma or bleed damage on a force wave build, um, you probably don't want to match this. I was match or was planning to match it on one of my builds. Um, I'm not anymore. I'm going to take it to 2 points, which I believe is 10% attack speed reduction, which is sufficient. Um, 1 point is 8%, so you really only gain 2% by putting in the second point, but I'll take the 10%. Um, and everything beyond that is eh, kind of lackluster. Squad tactics increase percent attack speed bonus to 14% by rank 12, 18% by max ultimate rank. I don't understand how they can think this is good. 4% attack speed over 10 levels that you will almost definitely not receive, because I do not actually know if you can get squad attack, it's plus 10. 4% um, attack speed over 10 levels is trash. <laughs> it's so bad, because it's not actually 4% attack speed, it's like... 3.3-ish attack speed, because weapons are now multiplicatively modifying your attack speed. It's so terrible. I don't understand how they think this is a worthwhile buff to the skill. Uh, sure, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll take it, sure. Why not? I'm not gonna use this at all, I'm still gonna put a point in it. And that's it. Squad tactics, garbage tier still. Demolitionist, canister bomb is significantly increased burn damage in weight of the Cinder Core, uh, pistol release. We still have diminishing return stealing. Yeah, um, in general, in ultimate ranks, what happens is flat damage um, flourishes uh, as you get more and more plus stills into a still flat damage completely flourishes. Percent damage and percent modifiers, like percent attack speed, uh, really diminishes and really just goes down the drain. And I'm not sold on this concept. It's been a concept that has been with Grim Dawn since I've started playing it. Um, 
And I'm not sold on whether this is a good idea. Um, I assume there's a reason, some kind of game theory reason behind it. I don't know what it is. I would love some insight into it from Xantario Media. I assume Media because I think Media was, was planning on this implementation from the get-go. I assume it's his idea. I would love to hear why. Um, I don't really understand it all so much. Um, I guess it kind of enables casters to... If casters have a lot of plus skills, it enables them to start competing with weapon damage users because the weapon damage would scale, because it's a percent, it would scale worse into ultimate ranks whereas the flat damage would excel, and so the casters don't have a lot of weapon damage, but they make good use of flat damage, um, so there you go. Conversely, on the other side of things, this negatively, severely negatively impacts two-handed weapons, because uh, two-handed weapons with respect to one-handed weapons, because one-handed weapons make much, much better use of flat damage, because they have much, much better speed, whereas two-handed weapons rely very heavily on percent weapon damage and on percent damage and that sort of stuff. Um, and they would benefit a lot more from percent attack speed and percent gas speed and percent speeds in general. Um, whereas, you know, one-handed weapons, I mean, yeah, they would love more speed, but they don't really need much more because they can cap themselves out really easily. So... Uh, it's a long, complex issue that I don't really disagree with it. Uh, I don't really agree with its implementation, but at the same time, I don't necessarily disagree with its implementation because I don't fully understand why it was implemented, and I don't want to rush to judgment on that front. If there's a good reason for it, sure, count me in. But the negative effects that this diminishing returns has on the game are very prevalent, and they do physically, mechanically uh, have an impact on the meta of the game, which is unfortunate. Alright, tangent aside, moving on to Demolitionist. Kinister Bomb significantly increased burn damage, I already said this is for that dank Cinder Core synergy coming in the expansion pack. Improved chasing, significantly increased internal trauma damage, to be converted into more burn damage, yay. Demon fire, removed armor reduction, straight up nerf, yay. I think demon fire sucks. This is the uh, second, no, the first modifier for Blackwater Cocktail, if I'm not mistaken. And it gives you chaos damage, which is okay. Uh, and that's about it now. <laughs> that's, that's really all this skill gives you. Um, <coughs> Mortal Trap. Increased damage dealing with rank. Yay! Heavy Ordnance. Increased lightning damage dealing with rank. Now also affects the bid one. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Hmm. I wonder how that was done mechanically behind the scenes. Um, that's pretty cool. Mortar Trap buffs. Yay. Stun Jets. Increased physical and lightning damage dealing with rank. Crit checks, increase percent damage modified penalty. Why are they getting to crit checks for full, sp full spread? Hold on. Full spread, increased internal trauma and electrocute damage dealing with rank. Crit checks, increased percent damage modified penalty to minus 50% by rank 3, increased percent energy cost reduction by 5% at all ranks. Um, the damage modified penalty was 45% at rank 3 previously. Um, this is a straight up nerf to the skill, of course, like, obviously, and you feel it. It's a very noticeable nerf. Um, the skill is still fine. Uh, Twitch jacks. I usually don't play casters all too much. Um, I'm more of a melee person, but Twitch jacks as a caster build was is probably my favorite build at present. Um, I very much enjoyed playing it, leveling it, uh, generally farming with it, um, and to that regard, I have a lot of, you know, experience and insight into this skill, so, 
The snurf is noticeable, but the skill is still good. It still can annihilate bosses in seconds. Um, I think the changes to Stun Jacks and Full Spread were mostly done to not not to offset the Quick Jacks changes, but to make Stun Jacks and Full Spread a little more viable without Quick Jacks, without taking the transmuter. And to that extent, I think they failed. I don't think they're viable on their own. Um, Quick Jacks is still very good. Um, it's kind of a unique skill to balance because, on the one hand, it can dish out hundreds of thousands of damage instantly. On the other hand, itemization for it is um, defensively weak, and skill support for it is defensively weak. Um, the main issue with quick jacks, and this isn't an issue that needs to be solved because I think it's kind of a risk for reward sort of thing, the issue with quick jacks is that you are a straight up last cannon with this skill. You have to be up in an enemy's face to be dealing the most damage. Meaning, they will be using their super heavy physical melee attacks against you. Um, and the itemization and the skill support and the devotion support for the skill is not very defensively oriented. So those attacks hurt. <laughs> um, and so if you want to try to mitigate the effectiveness of those attacks, if you want to try to buff up your defensiveness, you will lose a lot of the glass cannon super damage ability of quick jacks, which is fine. Uh, that's what balance is. Uh, I think quick jacks is a well-balanced skill now. I completely agree that previously its damage was too absurdly high. It was not Shadow Strike levels of high, but it was way, way too much. Um, it's still absurdly high. I don't think it's too much now. I think it's you know, you know, the correct porridge, it's just right. Um, this is a nice buff. Um, Quit Jacks always has had energy issues, and it still does. <laughs> it's, no matter how you build it, you run into energy issues. Um, my build has, I believe, 79 energy regeneration before parts, and it can get up to to like 140 energy regeneration, and it still has energy issues even after this um, energy cost reduction increase. So that's kind of another risk to using quick jets. You burn yourself out very quickly, you need to charge energy potions a lot, um, which is fine. Again, it's a very high damaging skill, more transmuter, that has some side effects, some negative effects to using it, but if you can balance between everything, you will be very justly rewarded. Uh, and I really like this skill for that reason. <coughs> Chat wants to know if Quit Jacks plus Aether Fire can work somehow. Yes! Um, I made an Aether damage Quick Jacks build, and it was okay. It's definitely not optimal. <laughs> Don't get me wrong there, it is definitely not the best way to play Twitch apps. But it's okay, it still demolishes content perfectly fine. Um, and Aether Fire is definitely the way to go, because you can get a lot of Aether Fire built up very quickly thanks to Twitch apps. Alright, I think I've talked about this one still enough. Thermite Mines, increased burn damage, sailing with Venk. Hellfire Mines, increased chaos damage, sailing with Venk cool buffs to a skill that, frankly, did not need it, because Thermite Mines is already kind of absurd, thanks to the, um, what is it, the Burning Knight? No, the, um, the four-piece set that gives bonuses to this. I completely forgot its name. Ozone's Chosen replaced percent damage bonuses with single percent all damage bonus. Um, Okay, so at first glance you might think, well, this is a neat buff because, you know, it supports conversion better, right? No. <laughs> Ozone's Chosen is technically a skill modifier, and as referenced earlier, up above, in some conversation or another, uh, skill modifiers happen before conversion. 
meaning its previous percent damage bonuses always benefited the damage prior to conversion taking place, meaning it now and before with conversion present, there's no difference. Uh, meaning this isn't actually a buff. This actually functionally does nothing to the skill except make the tooltip not so disgustingly large. <laughs> That's all this does. It makes the tooltip look better. Um, That's it. It's not a buff. It's not a buff to a skill that desperately needs a buff. Um, a cultist. Uh, bloody parts. Added flat vitality damage. Reduced spread. Interval causing the debuff to spread to additional enemies more rapidly. Reduced energy cost. Staling with rank and remove the cooldown. Wasting, reduced energy cost, staling with rank, blood death, increased poison damage, staling with rank, added percent bleed, d duration, staling with rank, fevered rage, no longer removes the cooldown, because it the still no longer has a cooldown. Percent damage modifier increased to 40%. Okay. Um, so I started leveling a bloody parts build. Got it to 11, wrote some feedback on the forms, in the testing forms, and then I never returned to the skill. Because I then worked on a Force Wave character. Because I had to. Um, because it was Force Wave, you know? It, it goes upstairs now. How could you not make a character with that? Um, my preliminary thoughts of Bloody Parts are that, on its own, it is very good. It is capable, on its own, of taking you through Normal and through Elite. And then, once you reach Ultimate, you will probably need some supplementary skill. Some more damage from another skill. Um... Some more bleed, poison, vitality, whatever. More damage. Um, but in normal, in and I imagine in elite, it has good damage against bosses. Um, it has good damage against, you know, crowds of enemies. <clears throat> I casted it once on the White Mire Rift, where all of the Aetherials come out of it. One cast deleted all three of the waves that came out of the rift, which I thought was incredible. Just use one still cast, instantly delete three waves. I imagine bloody parts could actually be very, very powerful in Crucible, in that regard, because it will just destroy onslaughts of enemies um, with one singular cast, because it can spread off corpses, so when everything dies and everything, and then the next wave comes and everything comes in, the corpses from the previous wave spread to the current wave, and so everything gets bloody parsed. Um, so just in terms of damage, the skill is very solid now, in my opinion. Wasting has a phenomenal offensive ability reduction, which is fantastic. It's a huge, huge buff to your defensiveness by reducing enemies' offensiveness. I, it can't be overstated how powerful wasting is in that regard. Um, and Black Death has a chance for confusion, which is a good sideways means of crowd controlling enemies. Um, doesn't always work because, you know, it's a percent chance to confuse, and bosses and stuff are immune to confusion, anyways. Um, but it's still a good defensive means of taking damage off you. So I'm convinced that Bloody Parts is actually going to be pretty okay in Crucible. It's not going to be the best, it's not going to be a Shadow Strike, because nothing can be a Shadow Strike. Um, but it should still be pretty good. Um, and my biggest, f most favorite change about this is right here. Such tedium for this skill to have a cooldown innately in it. And it was so dumb that you needed to use the transmuter to remove the cooldown to a skill that shouldn't have had a cooldown, whereas the transmuter also just poops on you by super influencing all of the enemies and everything. Um, now the transmuter might be in need of a buff, in my opinion, especially since this is kind of a nerf to it. Um, <laughs> it's better for trolling your friends, though. I'll give it that. Uh, it may be in need of a buff, I'm not sure. Storm Spirit. So, all in all, I'm very satisfied with the bloody parts changes. It's not a tier 1 skill. It most definitely is not. 
it's definitely usable and it's fun frankly i enjoyed playing it i had fun using it um, and i think that's what's most important <laughs> not to get you know sentimental or sappy about it but i think that is what grim dawn is going for other arpgs are very you know efficiency focused and there's certainly an efficiency focus to grim dawn but grim dawn prides itself on its fun i think it makes the leveling process as enjoyable as possible, which is why people enjoy making so many alts, whereas in something like Path of Exile or Diablo 3, the leveling process is minimized as much as possible, so that you can just jump into the endgame. Um, so I think Grim Dawn you know, focuses on fun. Um, and Bloody Parts is more fun, which is great. Storm Spirit is now a large aura around the familiar rather than a cast buff. Um, mechanically, in single player, this doesn't really matter. This mostly... Uh, well, I guess it kind of does. It means that this skill... Okay, so Storm Spirit is a skill passive modifier thing to the Raven summon in a cultist. Um, and it gives you elemental damage, elemental resist... I think that might be it. Um, so now that uh, previously the Storm Spirit would just cast it on, you know, the player or maybe one of your summons or something, now it's a aura buff around the familiar, which is a little weird because the Storm Spirit is kind of a ranged enemy or summon. Um, so depending on how large the aura is, I don't know if it will actually affect all of your melee summons that are right up in the face. Um, of enemies. But if it does, if it now benefits you and all of your summons all at once, it's pretty good. Not gonna lie. That could be really solid. Nightblade. Armor Master's Blade Burst significantly increased core damage dealing with range. Shadow Strike buffs. Kind of. Anatomy of Murder. Added percent vitality decay duration staling with rank. Memes. Blade Spirit, increased pierce and core damage dealing with rank. Sure. I guess. Maybe Blade Spirit is good again. Who knows? Blade Trap, increased radius by one. Reduced cooldown to two seconds. Who cares? No one. It's, I mean, for its purpose, it's much better now. It now just, like, completely shuts down a crowd of enemies. Then you find a hero or a boss, and the skill is useless. Devouring blades increase vitality damage, dealing with rank. Same as above. Dual blades increase pierce damage, dealing with rank. They really want pierce to be a thing in this patch, I guess. Elemental awakening reduced frostburn damage, dealing with rank. Shadow strike nerfs. Execution reduced percent weapon damage, dealing at. Reduce percent weapon damage scaling at ultimate ranks to 330% by max ultimate rank. Maybe a shadow strike nerf? I don't know. Mindasmo blades. Increased bleed pierce damage scaling with rank. Yay! Fnatic throw. Increased conversion ratio to 75% and mana cost reduction to 55%. <coughs> Fnatic throw is maybe pretty good now. Who knows? I don't. <laughs> it, I'm no, I'm being serious. It could actually be pretty good again compared to you know other stuff. It already was good in its own right. It could be good compared to a whole bunch of other stuff. Heart Seeker now also increases percent bleed duration staling with rank. Cool, actually, that's pretty decent. Nether Edge added crit damage staling with rank. Oh crap! Wow. Hold on. I have something for this. Wow! Okay. That's actually pretty impressive. I'm going to make a phonetic throw now. Throw build now. Holy shit. Alright. Shadow Strike, reduce percent weapon damage dealing at ultimate ranks to 330... 
360% by maxed ultimate rank. Reduced cold and pierce damage dealing with rank, primarily at ultimate ranks. This might be a Shadow Strike nerf, I'm not sure. Maybe. I don't really know. The dollar's justifiable ends. Reduced percent crit damage to 35% by rank 12. 45% by max ultimate rank. Again, maybe a Shadow Strike nerf, I don't know if anyone really knows. Artanists. Let me see my thinking folder later. No, it's not safe for work, and therefore I'm not putting it on the stream. <laughs> Actually, uh... I'll show you a piece of it later, how about that? Where is it? Why do I have so many memes? Okay. Um... Arcanist. Inferno! They placed armor reduction with physical resist reduction. They really want you to use that, uh... What, what is it? The Baronath Reforged. Kalidor's Tempest. Seems good. Not really. I think I looked this one up. I believe it's, like... It's something less than 20. <laughs> I don't remember the actual value at 12 out of 12. Maybe it's 18 physical resist reduction, which isn't terrible, but it's not break morale, and it's not, um, uh, it's not Assassin's Mark. It's not Manticore spray, Venom, Acid spray thing, um, and it doesn't stack. So, eh. Panetti's replicating missile. Increased damage dealing with rank. Yay. Star Pact. Reduced frostburn damage dealing with rank. I would assume that's a Shadow Strike nerf. Shaman, or Shaman. Boot Force. Increased lightning damage and percent physical damage scaling with rank. Added percent internal trauma damage and increased duration to internal trauma. <coughs> Emboldening War. Increased offensive ability scaling at ultimate ranks to 120 by max ultimate rank. That feels insufficient. <laughs> Primal Strike, intri light, hold on. Yes, I'm using Grim Tech rather than Grim Tools. Shoot me. So a temporary buff from a summon is about as good as when maximally overtapped. It's about as good as 17 out of 12 field command, which you can have up permanently. Mm, yeah. I don't know. I've never liked Emboldening anymore. I've always thought, thought it was pretty terrible. I still think it is. <laughs> Primal Strike. Increased percent weapon damage to 110% base, 250% by rank 16, 300% by max ultimate rank, but... In Thunderous Strike, we increase the percent damage modified penalty to minus 38%. Um, I assume these are meant to offset one another while trying to encourage Primal Strike without its transmuter um, to be more viable. I don't know if that would succeed. Uh, <laughs> I do not know if that would work. It may just be a straight up nerf to Thunderous Strike. I don't really know. Storm Totem. This, w this one is good. Storm Totem. Increased fire rate by 20%. Increased the number of chained targets by 1. And... Are you, are you ready? Added electrocute damage, which turns into vitality decay with the transmuter. Finally, <laughs> we can make an electrocute build. Finally, I can use the Storm Reaver, two-handed melee weapon. Um, which focuses on electrocute damage. Holy... Bajibus, thank goodness. I'm actually really happy about this. I haven't made a build for this yet, but I really want to. Um, looking... Maybe we can also make a Vitality Decay build. Who knows? Maybe. Eh? <clears throat> Wendigo Totem now casts Bloody, pa uh, Bloody Pat without a delay. 
kind of untrue, unless they changed it or fixed it again from my last report. Previously, Blood Pact would be cast um, every four, no, not every, but four seconds after the Wendigo totem was placed on the ground, like on the mark, four seconds. Now it casts around 1.5 to 2.2 seconds after Wendy Wendigo totem is placed. Um, it's a little weird. I don't really know if anyone knows why, including Crate. But it's better, I guess. I don't know. I've always been dissuaded from using Blood Pact because you don't get it immediately, and so if you want to rely on its damage, you can't. <laughs> because its damage isn't reliable, because you can't, you know, get it when you want it. You have to wait a little bit. Eh. Wind Devil, increased damage dealing with me, can slightly increase the move speed. It needs more than a slight increase to its movement speed, let's be honest. Raging Tempest, increased cold damage scaling with rank. Okay. And that's the patch. Um, yeah. I say this a lot when I review a patch. Um, I usually say something like, you know, wow, I'm really looking forward to... Uh, I think that these are great changes. I, th I think Crate did a good job. Yeah. I usually end by saying that. Um, and I usually mean it, don't get me wrong. But I do enjoy this patch. Um, again, it's mostly... Th this about sums it up. Oh, well, no. This about sums it up. It's intended to bridge fixes and care to data in preparation for Grimdon's first expansion, while providing some very nice quality of life changes and some general balance enhancements that I think are very well deserved in general. Um... Other than a few very minute, very minor changes here and there, there's not really anything that I disagree with. Um, which is, you know, actually strange. I, there's usually stuff that I fundamentally disagree with. Um, and, you know, stuff like the squad tactics that I was ranting about earlier, I don't disagree with it being buffed, because it needed to be. I disagree with the approach to how it was buffed. Um, but in terms of, like, just each individual change to the game, I'm completely in favor of everything, pretty much, which is cool. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed playing 1.0.0.9. I think back then the gameplay was really solid. Uh, Big, big improvements overall. Um, and now we have even more quality of life changes that are really, really nice to have. Um, and the balance is more so improved. The character variability, viability, the dynamics to character development are substantially improved upon, which is great. Um, and yeah, that's, that's all there is to it. Again, there's not any new features or anything. Nothing was, you know, added. Uh, there's no new content, no new items or anything. Um, to my knowledge, I, I don't think they put a secret in there or anything. Um, but in general, it's just a good, wholesome kind of patch that does everything that it needed to, uh, which is fine. And I'm I really enjoy playing this. I, re I really enjoyed testing this. You know, there were some weird bugs, sure. Uh, but I really just had fun with the game. Which, you know, for a veteran with around 1,700 hours in Grim Dawn and 2,500 hours in Titan Quest, which are two very, very similar games, for me to still have fun after 4,200 hours is fantastic. Um, so, good patch, <laughs> you know, good, good patch. Um, alright, that about sums up my analysis and review. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, because I'm streaming this, it's a little weird, um, but I'm going to be putting it on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you didn't, 
feel free to leave a dislike, uh, but also please leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. I get a lot of comments that are like, patch analysis video, that's way too long, it's two hours, why would you look at a patch notes for two hours? I get a lot of comments like that. Um, and that's, I, I acknowledge them, but I also kind of just ignore them, because when I make these, I'm trying to help people understand the patch to the same extent that I do, and try to um, get people thinking about the patch to the same extent that I do. And I, if I don't do that in, you know, uh, its fair share of time, and it does take time to get certain points across, um, I don't think that happens. I don't think I accomplished that goal. So, yeah, anyways, just leave a like, leave a subscribe, leave a Twitch follow, leave a comment, I don't know, do something. Get in contact with me, give me feedback, I love feedback, um, that sort of stuff. Cool. Bye. <laughs> Enjoy the patch before I stop recording. Enjoy the patch because it is enjoyable. Alright. And while the recording... What? Okay. While the recording is going on... Here's my thinking folder. You're welcome. <laughs> tons and tons of thinking emojis. I really enjoy this one. <laughs> it doesn't have too many uses, but I enjoy this one. And I'm not going to scroll up, because... It's kind of a not safe for work thing up here. And I'm not going to show off, because I don't want my Twitch to be banned. Um, yeah, good stuff. Alright, that's all for... Alright, I didn't see who just followed me, but I know that that's my follower notification, and it just freaked me the fuck out. Um, yeah, I don't know who followed me, but whoever you are, thank you very much for the follow. <laughs> I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Um, and... I may be streaming this patch later today, definitely tomorrow. I can absolutely guaranteed... Wait, is it Thursday? Yeah. I will guaranteed be streaming this tomorrow. Um, yeah, thank you all for tuning in. I need to get some food because I am so hungry right now. Uh, and enjoy the patch. <laughs>